Okay, maybe I shouldn't start a video this way, but I have to be honest with you. This is the first time I've researched a topic that has given me nightmares. Today we're going to talk about an algorithm that truly scares me, and I don't understand why more people aren't talking about it. Before you assume that I'm just an AI doom and gloomer, you should know that I've been a data scientist for more than 10 years. We're going to dive into Alpha Geometry, the latest marvel from Google DeepMind. It's an AI that was designed to solve complex geometry proofs, and it's the closest we've come to building an AI that can truly think like a human being. In other words, artificial general intelligence. In fact, it came in second place at an international math olympiad, just narrowly edged out by the smartest young mathematician in the world. It's a massive leap forward in artificial intelligence, because unlike other disciplines of math, geometry requires both creativity and logic to solve. An algorithm that can solve geometry proofs opens the door to AI algorithms that can surpass the abilities of humans. And if you were once the coolest kid in robotics club like me, you may now be wondering, is this the beginning of the robot revolution? Let's dive in and find out. Do you remember that whole thing a while back when Sam Altman was fired and then rehired from OpenAI over this thing called QSTAR that was supposed to be an artificial general intelligence that was a threat to humanity? We never got proof of that, but that's what everyone said. Well, Google DeepMind just publicly released Alpha Geometry, and it's very similar. Historically, computer algorithms have just been giant calculators. While they can be extremely fast at computations, your calculator's never been able to tell you why it arrived at an answer before. That's why geometry is so unique and important. You see, when humans learn geometry, we teach our brains for the first time how to use both logic and creative reasoning skills. Geometric proofs prepare our brains for more complicated math proofs, like when we deal with really complicated objects in multivariable calculus, or squishy objects, like in topology, or when we work with number theory, which is where new discoveries are made that could affect your life. While calculators and algorithms have been helpful to humanity, it has always taken a human mind to discover a new type of math. Like for example, it wasn't a calculator that discovered calculus, it was these two old dudes. But if we can teach an algorithm to prove geometry, how much longer will it take for it to discover things that have so far been out of reach for humans? Okay, so now that you're probably just as scared as I was when I first read this paper, I want to invite you to come out from under your desk, sit back down in your chair, and take a deep breath. Watch until the end of this video because there's actually a lot of hope in this. I just have to finish giving you some context before I can explain. And if you're finding this video to be helpful, please hit the thumbs up so that YouTube's algorithm recommends this video to other people. Thank you for doing that. So if you're new to this whole artificial general intelligence news cycle, you might not know that this is not the first time that Team DeepMind has been able to build an algorithm that could do something that we previously thought was impossible for an algorithm to do. Back in 2016, which was only eight years ago, but in machine learning time, that's about a hundred years. That was when they made an algorithm called AlphaGo it was a gaming algorithm. And there's actually a surprisingly interesting documentary about this on the Google DeepMind YouTube channel, which I will link in the description. Now, Team DeepMind has always been interested in creating gaming algorithms. And we're not talking about them beating me at gaming. We're talking about professional gamers. At Google DeepMind, we've always loved games. Go, chess, even video games like Atari. Playing any game well is about assessing your environment, planning your next move, and making good decisions. We wondered, 
What if an AI program could do all this with zero help from us? No game strategies, not even the rules. So we built it. An AI program that taught itself how to play games, win games, and then how to do it in the smartest way. We all know what chess is, but that's not what DeepMind wanted to tackle. They wanted their algorithm to play the ancient Chinese game Go. The goal of Go is to surround more territory than your opponent. Like with all games, there are lots of very serious players of Go, and AlphaGo beat the highest rated professional Go player in the world four out of five times. AlphaGo uses reinforcement machine learning. Basically, what that means is it isn't given any rules or strategies of the game. It's just made to play itself in this game until it learns how to play. And in doing that, it learned stuff that it could use to then beat the human Go player. The reason why they picked Go instead of chess is because Go is hundreds of thousands of times harder than chess for a machine to learn how to play. The number of possible games may as well be infinite. Most of the moves in Go are based on human intuition and creativity. So the algorithm couldn't just memorize every possible move and then play based on probability. It actually had to think creatively. So DeepMind engineers took the AlphaGo algorithm and combined it with a large language model. You may have used one of these before. The most common large language model is OpenAI's ChatGPT platform, which is useful for helping your kid with common core math that you never learned in school. OpenAI, once again, remember, they're the people behind that whole Q-star thing that we talked about before. This combination of algorithms between the reinforcement learning and the LLM could be the next giant leap toward building an AI that can solve humanity changing problems like quantum gravity, fusion reactors, interstellar space travel, maybe even time travel. Okay, so those issues are still quite a long way away from being solved. So far, alpha geometry has only shown that it's possible for an algorithm to generalize problems and discover new theorems at a high school math level. But the point is, this is still a giant leap forward. And it doesn't have to be a human enslaving dystopia algorithm. This AI could grow up to be more like Bender than Robot Santa. For now, it's actually closer to being like your smart refrigerator, actually. It's still just a program, which is still just a bunch of math, but it's much more advanced than those calculator algorithms that we have been historically working with. It's nothing to be scared of yet. Let's look at some possible applications for this algorithm in our near-term future. So Alpha Geometry has been able to blend creativity and logical thinking, which is undoubtedly going to open the floodgates for more uses of AI. For the first time, we may be able to create algorithms that make a lot less mistakes. Most of the algorithms making the news these days are a neural network of some type. Basically, these algorithms take a bunch of data that doesn't have an obvious relationship and they shove it through a whole bunch of mathematical functions and then they get out a relationship that wasn't obvious in the beginning. They can be used for almost anything. Some of the main uses of these algorithms are image recognition and classification in security cameras, helping banks predict which borrowers might default on loans so that they can have better risk management strategies, detecting money laundering activities, controlling robots, helping with manufacturing and logistics problems, and translation services. So the thing is, these algorithms are not perfect. Machine learning engineers usually aim at producing an algorithm that is correct 90 to 95% of the time. That might not sound so bad, and depending on what the algorithm is used for, it's probably fine, but there are instances where that's just not good enough. For example, do you want your driverless car to only hit five to 10% of children that dart in front of it in the road? I'm guessing not. I'm not working on driverless car technology. But I think one of the major hurdles that people working on driverless cars have to overcome is how to get the algorithm to adapt quickly enough to an abrupt change in its environment. This is something that a non-distracted human being with instincts and critical thinking can easily do. 
Algorithms like alpha geometry that can be creative as well as logical could potentially be useful for driverless cars if engineers can figure out how to make them process information as quickly as human instincts. Right now, it takes alpha geometry longer to prove math than it would take a human. So that, that would have to be fixed before we can use this in driverless cars. So another example would be algorithms dealing with credit applications. Um, let's look at a hypothetical mortgage application for a human being living in 2024. This human might not be able to get the loan that they have applied for and that they are probably eligible for. Algorithms being based on statistics mostly are backward looking in nature. They have a hard time evolving and learning new things as culture and their environment evolves. There isn't a lot of past data available for certain demographics of people, which can cause the algorithm to say no to a potentially really good candidate, this human, because it doesn't have any data about whether or not a non-binary person will pay their mortgage or not. We can see that the five to 10% of mistakes that algorithms tend to make most of the time affect minority groups the most, which is not something that we as a society should be willing to accept. Usually after an algorithm makes a mistake, whether it's a minor mistake or one that could potentially have life altering ramifications to a person, the machine learning engineers have to make adjustments to the code after the fact, after the mistakes already been made. And these are often mistakes that a reasonable human wouldn't make. Google's breakthrough with alpha geometry shows that we can now do three essential things. Alpha geometry uses synthetic data. What the hell does that mean, right? It means that we're able to expand the data set beyond just what was provided to the algorithm. So in the case of the mortgage, we would be able to have the algorithm learn that being non-binary does not affect whether or not someone's gonna pay their mortgage. This is something that we weren't able to previously do with things like supervised machine learning or even just regular old neural nets that we had previously built. Alpha geometry or whatever algorithm it morphs into can be more creative about how it solves problems and think into the future to make decisions. So that would potentially help with the driverless car issue where it can be like, oh, I need a creative solution. Let's dart out of the way, just like a human being would potentially consider. It can fix its own mistakes without having a human intervene in the code. And these things can be, in my opinion, a great addition to society, solve a lot of problems that we currently deal with, but we do have to be really careful not to let this algorithm learn things like how to break our encryption or figure out our nuclear secrets or enslave humanity. <laughs> Maybe one day, algorithms will make less mistakes overall. Now, I haven't shown you specifically what happens to cause an algorithm to make a mistake. And that might be an important thing for you to consider if you're still skeptical about alpha geometry, neural networks that are similar, or even just algorithms and machine learning in general. Now, I actually have an entire video about how my adorable genius dog tricked a neural network into making a mistake and classifying him as a human being. You can watch it by clicking here.